And we've covered a lot of ground, metaphorically, from the Garden of Eden, a couple of the mountains, one more stop next week. But before we get there, as Jesus encountered his disciples, we come to Caesarea Philippi. Jesus and his disciples went into the villages near Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? They told him, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others one of the other prophets. He asked them, and what about you? Who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. You are the Christ. With that statement, Peter, previously known as Simon, took a giant leap forward and carried all the other disciples into a new reality, a new promise of God. So let's look at what happened. Now, Caesarea Philippi is about the northern reaches of Galilee, the northern area that Jesus' ministry took him. It was named, or it was named after a temple that Herod the Great had built in honor of Caesar Augustus. Let that sink in for a moment. Herod the Great, king of the Jews, builds a temple not for Yahweh, not for the Spirit of God, but for the Emperor. That's the world that Jesus found himself in. Who do you say that I am? <clears throat> Who do people say that I am? Well, these are good Jewish boys. They knew the answers. Some say Elijah. Because it was known that Elijah, the great prophet, would return as a herald to announce that the Messiah had come. Others said, John the Baptist. I mean, John was recognized as a prophet. And, and oh, what a prophet he was. Preaching about repentance and the coming of God's kingdom. And all that, the promise of God fulfilled. It's got to be one of those. Maybe... Maybe not reincarnation, maybe not the herald, maybe just a good prophet. Any of those would be acceptable answers. Those would win your category if this was Jeopardy. But Jesus, okay, so those are all good answers. You're not wrong. But who do you say that I am? And that, my friends, is the question that the modern church must answer. In fact, each of us here today has to answer that question for ourselves. But not just for ourselves, but for the sake of the world that needs to know who Jesus is. Now, Peter, we'll just skip over Simon. Peter 
says, you are the Messiah. The Messiah. The very word carried power. Everyone who heard that word that day knew what Peter was talking about. But Jesus was not the first person to be described as Messiah. There had been others. There would be others after him. So is Peter wrong? One translation says, you are the Christ, which is the Greek version of Messiah. And Christ simply means the anointed one. Anointed for what? By whom? Well, I want you to try to wrap your mind around what Peter is saying. What Peter by saying you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, you are the anointed one of God. How would you like to have that label? No, I don't see any hands going up. Okay. Peter, by making this declaration, unprompted, other than, who do you say that I am? Peter makes a statement, a declaration, not only of identity, but of purpose. And not only of purpose, but a summon by God into a new reality. Now I said earlier that this is something that the church, all of us as part of the church, has to say for ourselves, who do you say that Jesus is? Because when people think of the church, they think of a building. They think of an institution. They think of apple dumplings, or choirs, or all kinds of things, scandals sometimes. They think of a lot of things. But how often do, we, do people, when they think of the church, think of Jesus? Jesus, in the Matthew version of the story, says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John. You are Peter, and upon you I will build my church. <coughs> Peter had just said, Jesus is the anointed one, the one who would usher us into the presence of God. And Jesus turns right around and says, on you, I will build my church. I wonder if Peter realized when he offered the words, you are the Christ, if he knew what he was getting himself in for. So, here it is. Who do you say Jesus is? Who will you say this afternoon? Tomorrow morning? Next time you're at Super One? Next time you find yourself on the wild and crazy streets of Missoula? Who is Jesus? for you. Now there may not be anybody around when you finally come to that awareness. And maybe you've been a church member for decades. And you've served on committees and you've sung in the choir and you've, you've given lots of money to the church. 
But that's not what Peter gave that day in Caesarea Philippi. He gave from the heart and claimed the identity, the awareness of Jesus' purpose. Do you realize what that means for us? Let's back up a second. I knew I will build my church. So, you you're driving down the road, maybe you're sitting in your easy chair, and that light bulb goes off, and you say it out loud, you are whatever, whatever term you come up with. I mean, you got goosebumps. This is kind of cool. I, I, I just can't, I wish I could be with each of you when you say those words. Because this is, this, we're talking cosmic kind of stuff. Or maybe not. You say those words. Jesus, you are. And then Jesus turns right around and says, Dave, Julie, Carolyn. You are would Jesus say you are the rock? Pebble? Grain of sand? Would Jesus say this is how much I can build on you? Or would Jesus say I think we can do that. You see, when Jesus says to Peter, on you, you are the rock. On you I will build my church. Jesus wasn't talking about an institution or a building or a program or anything that is human hand made. Jesus says, I will do the building. But you have to be the one who says who I am. You see, this is one of those little, little throwaway passages that we can really skip over. I mean, yay, Jesus, you're the Messiah. And then we get right on. And we, 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 we love that part that follows this where Jesus <coughs> and, and Peter have another exchange where Jesus starts to talk about his death and Peter says, no, that can't happen. Yeah. And Peter, or Jesus turns right around and says, get behind me, Satan. We love that little phrase. We, you, you've used it on some of your friends, I'm sure. Or maybe even your, your family. <laughs> or maybe they've used it on you. I don't know. Mama. The problem is, we're, we're pretty good about saying who Jesus is for us. We're pretty good about having that relationship, that one-on-one. -on -one. But we're not so good about saying who Jesus is on us. For what can Jesus build upon your life? Is Jesus able to have a, one of those little granny pods? Or is Jesus building a, you know, you know those granny pods, those little uh, efficiencies that you put in your backyard? So, Grandma can have her independence. Does any, has anybody ever heard that term? Wow. Okay. Okay, that reference did nowhere. Um, Mother-in-law apartment. Okay. What is Jesus building on your life? 
Peter was a rock, a solid foundation, because his faith had brought him to the point after spending time with Jesus, after investing time and effort and passion in learning the ways of this itinerant rabbi, coming to the awareness that, oh, this is more than just words. This is more than just pages in a book or on a scroll. This is more than rituals or hymns or prayers. This is life. This is real. And I want it. I want it all. For Peter and the others, they had to take that step from going from followers of Jesus. Hey, this is a good idea. Maybe he'll teach us some stuff. Maybe he's got some insights into God. Jesus came to do more than teach. Jesus came to do more than to save you. Jesus came to hear your confession. Who do you say that I am? Because if you're only looking to Jesus to save you from your sins, or to take you to heaven, that's nice. But is that going to help the world at all? Because the world needs to know that your faith isn't dependent upon fear or uncertainty or blind acceptance of a dogma or doctrine. The world needs to know that your life is present with God. And that with God upon you, if every church was taken away tomorrow, if every Bible in the world was banished, would there be enough for Jesus to build a church upon? Because that's where we are. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked Peter. Now, Jesus asked all of them. It wasn't just Peter. Peter's response is the only one written down. So the rock. You are the rock. The rock of Victor. The rock of Stevensville. The rock of Florence. The rock of your street. Is there enough certainty in your heart that Christ can build a new relationship upon. Because when all of this is said and done, when Christ returns and the trumpet sounds and glories are ringing through the heavens, will we have any idea whose name we're shouting? Because and final analysis. Yay. What we do here this morning, what you've already been a part of, is just a whisper. It's just, just on the tip of your tongue. And Jesus says to you, Who do you say that I am? 